And now we greet, the, we greet the leader who's wrapping up 30 years with the David Lawrence Center in Naples. He's seen it grow from, uh, from a single site to seven sites throughout our area, and he has been the leader, the voice of mental health care in Collier County for all that time. Uh, not Blooms, but he is a very special guy, and he de deserves all the credit and tributes he gets. Dave Schimmel, welcome. Thanks for your time, sir. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, you've uh, you've uh, you've written quite a legacy for yourself, and when mental health care I had no one else to speak up for it, you were the voice, you were the champion, you beat the drums and made us all more aware of the need and of what we need to do uh, to to make it right. So uh, thank mm -hmm. you for your service. Well, thank thanks for recognizing me. Uh, talk to us about where we go from here. The the state of mental health care. Uh, are you optimistic? Um, I'm always optimistic. You have to be if you work in the field of mental health because one of the most important things we can do for people is to try to inspire hope in them. And, and with the technology that we have today, everybody can get better, uh, regardless of what type of mental illness they suffer from. What do you mean? Uh, well, I mean, we're, we're learning that uh, mental illness is a brain disorder. It's a disorder of the brain. There are specific kinds of things going on in the brain that react to uh, medications. Uh, and I think there's a lot of hope on the horizon with the genetic uh, research that's going on uh, that we ultimately are going to find even better medications uh, to be able to help people live as normal a life as possible. Uh, when I started in this business back in the late 60s, mm -hmm. um, we were giving people medications that essentially numbed their brain with serious side effects. Today the medications are so specific uh, that there's no reason why we can't uh, encourage people to get a job, live independently, and live as full a life as possible. And that's the hope we want to inspire in everybody who comes to us. Locally, is there more awareness? It, it seems to me that there's a larger constituency these days mm -hmm. for mental health care, mm -hmm. and we see mm -hmm. services like the, we, Lee, Lee County is getting a mental, a mental hospital, right? They, they have a mental hospital. And the Collier County Public School System and probably others are getting involved Mm -hmm. in mental health awareness and spotting, usually spotting signs of trouble mm -hmm. before the trouble happens. Mm -hmm. All that's good or we still have mm -hmm. work to do? We, we, all of that is great and we have come light years from uh, when I started in this field 45 years ago. Uh, but, and, and you know, unfortunately, Jeff, sometimes it takes a tragedy. Uh, to shine the spotlight on the lack of mental health treatment and resources. And, and we had such a tragedy in Connecticut. Um, but there are tremendous collaborations going on in this community right now. The Collier County Sheriff's Department does a phenomenal job of training each road patrol deputy to recognize mental illness. And that is having a huge impact on keeping those individuals out of jail and getting them to the David Lawrence Center where we can start treatment. And that has a huge financial impact on taxpayers as well. Does that deal with recognizing someone who's bipolar as opposed to someone who's just being a wise guy and who might be drunk? Is that that it, kind of it thing? It does. It's 40 hours of intense training that uh, is coordinated by the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill. They we, do great work. We have a local chapter, and I believe it's probably the best chapter in the United States. They're the best. They are the best, and we work very closely uh, with them. And those officers undergo 40 hours of training. They come Good. to the David Lawrence Center. We walk them through our Baker Act receiving facility. Uh, they, we talk to them, physicians talk to them about diagnosis and the signs and symptoms. And that's getting ready to go community-wide. We're getting ready to institute a program called Mental Health First Care, or First Aid. And Mental Health First Aid is a nationally recognized program where you actually go into the community and you invite members of all the institutions and the public to go through a training Great. so that they can learn how to recognize signs and symptoms, and more importantly, where to steer those people to get the assistance they need. True or false, it's how you approach someone who may be bipolar. It makes all the difference in their response and the outcome of that incident. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. When I first started in this field back in the 60s, uh, we were doing significant electroshock therapy. I was actually hired in college to work as an orderly on a psych unit because I was large. 
Uh, and today, the whole emphasis is on verbal interventions, working with people, recognizing people's assets, not just their liabilities, and starting to build on those assets. What's the future for David Lawrence Center? And you, you obviously will have a very special perspective on that. Mm -hmm. says that and your, your, your tenure is due up in January. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your hope for the future? Well, my hope for the future is that we can engage more aspects of the community in the whole issue of mental health. That's really been our mantra um, for the last 45 years that uh, the David Lawrence Center has uh, been in existence. The biggest issue in mental health is access to mental health. Yep. And the Florida legislature dealt a crushing blow this last year when they refused to consider the expansion of Medicaid. Um, and that is our biggest issue at the David Lawrence Center, who, by the way, our mission is to try to keep these individuals safe and try to keep you and the community safe. Um, and it is much safer for us to be engaged with someone, engaging them in treatment, than it is for people to be in the community untreated. And 50% of the people who suffer from major mental illnesses will never seek treatment. So access to care is one of our highest priorities. And access to care needs to happen more than just at the David Lawrence Center. It needs to happen in the school system, in the criminal justice system, in physicians' offices, uh, so forth and so on. So promoting that kind of a message and giving people in the community the tools to recognize this is, is one of our top priorities. Talk about getting care. One of the things that you've done over the years is that you've helped remove the stigma. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. huge in mm -hmm. someone deciding to get care, right? Mm -hmm. I, think, I think we've done a lot of work. A lot of others have done a lot of work. Yeah. But one of the interesting things, Jeff, is many people now go to their primary care physician for their mental health treatment. Uh, and the advent of antidepressant medication has helped reduce that stigma as, more, as well. If you watch the evening news, there will be multiple ads from pharmaceutical companies mm. uh, about antidepressants as well as a variety of other medications. David so. Schimmel, thanks for your time. Thank you for your service, and please mm -hmm. stay involved. Thanks for having me. And David Lawrence Center, David Schimmel, will be right back to wrap this up. Take a look at next week's show right after this. There's a Lipper Marketplace Best Money Manager right in your backyard. Moran Edwards Asset Management Group of Wells Fargo Advisors received Best Money Manager Top Performer Recognition as of September 30th, 2011 from Thomson Reuters Lipper Marketplace. Come meet the Naples team with extraordinary attention to service. Call 239-254-2200 today for a personal consultation with Moran Edwards Asset Management Group. Our show offers you something different, an opportunity to ask the questions. It's easy. There are three ways. Call 239-213-6070, send us an email, or complete the form at naplesnews.com slash newsmakers. It's about accountability and what we need to know. Let's get the answers together. Join us Sunday mornings at 10 on ABC7.